as the chair of trustees of both the Jerusalem and Middle East Church Association and Embrace the Middle East, it's a great delight to be able to take part in this message of tribute and thanks to uh, Archbishop Sahail and uh, of encouragement and hope to Bishop Hussam as the transition of Archiepiscopal ministry in the Diocese of Jerusalem takes place. Back in 2005, when I was serving as uh, the Anglican chaplain in Damascus as uh, part of the, the diocese, when you, Archbishop uh, Suhail, were elected as the coadjutor bishop, uh, I have since then uh, walked uh, with you as, uh, as best I can in prayer and uh, in solidarity throughout uh, this, uh, this journey of your Episcopal ministry. It was a, a, a great delight to, to be able to uh, be at your enthronement uh, and to see, uh, despite the very uh, complicated and uh, difficult circumstances in which uh, you assumed your, uh, your ministry, to see how uh, you have been faithful to your commitment to uh, ministries of, of reconciliation, uh, uh, both uh, with, within the uh, Christian community ecumenically uh, and uh, indeed uh, into faith and uh, between uh, communities that have often been divided uh, and faced uh, difficulties. But uh, also the, the ministry of, of building up, of uh, fostering and nurturing vocations and leadership within the Christian community. And uh, Bishop Hussam himself is a, a fruit of, uh, of, of that, but uh, only, only one. And in both with uh, Embrace and uh, uh, Jamaica, to have uh, been able to, uh, to share in the, uh, the diocesan ministries, so many uh, ways in which uh, the communities uh, are served uh, through hospitals, through education, people with disadvantage, uh, and uh, showing Christ's love uh, time and again. So that has been a, a, a fruitful ministry and one for which uh, I give thanks of, to have been able to witness and, and pray uh, alongside, uh, both uh, working at Lambeth Palace in the time I was there and, uh, and subsequently. It is uh, such an important place, uh, uh, Jerusalem, and the, uh, the precincts of uh, St George's Cathedral, St George's College, the Guest House, uh, the ministry for, uh, with and alongside the uh, Anglican Communion Sisters and Brothers has, uh, has been a, a real inspiration. And through much of that, uh, Bishop Hussam has, uh, has been a constant presence. So as uh, we, this uh, baton is handed uh, from Archbishop to a new Archbishop in Jerusalem, uh, I uh, give thanks for this new time, uh, again a, a difficult and complicated time uh, for the Church, uh, but confident that uh, the formation, the uh, inspiration that uh, we draw from uh, each other will ensure uh, a, a, a fruitful ministry and one in which uh, your experience, uh, uh, Bishop Hussam, e e ecumenically with uh, the heads of churches, uh, into faith in, in so many uh, different ways, uh, but uh, also through having been uh, such a, a, uh, an inspirational dean of the cathedral, all of that will uh, stand you in good stead as you uh, rely on the guidance of the Holy Spirit for which we pray and uh, the strength of, of Christ to continue this uh, service of the archbishops in Jerusalem to uh, the Anglican Communion, to the church at large and the communities in which you find yourselves serving. Thank you so much, every blessing, and I do so hope to be able to join you on Ascension Day for uh, the inauguration of a, 
another ministry which I pray I may share a small part in. Thank you. Archbishop Hale and Hosam. I'm Jim Quinn. I'm chairman of the Friends of the Holy Land and I wish to express my thanks, gratitude and admiration to you, Archbishop Sir Hale, on laying down the responsibilities of your office as Archbishop of, Jer of Jerusalem, and you, Archbishop Hosam, on taking up those responsibilities. I speak for all at Friends of the Holy Land, the trustees, the staff, the volunteers, both here in this country, United Kingdom, and in Palestine. I speak particularly for Peter Rand and Brendan Metcalf, who, like me, have travelled to Jerusalem on a number of occasions and had the pleasure and privilege to meet and work with you both and enjoy your company. Archbishop Sir Hale, we have appreciated your friendship and support as we have identified and developed our mission in the Holy Land. You have opened yourself and all of St George's to provide immensely valuable help and promptings, without which we would have been hugely less effective. At the same time, you made it a joy to come and visit you and all connected with St George's. I particularly recall, with renewed thanks, your visit to the United Kingdom in November 2019, when you led our 10th anniversary celebrations with services in London, Coventry and Glasgow. We wish you and your wife Shafika a happy and fulfilling retirement and blessings on the open of this new chapter of your life. I have cause always to remember that St Paul ran the race to the end. He does not mention retirement all, at all, I'm afraid. Archbishop Hosam, we have known you and thank you since you offered yourself as one of our guides and organisers in the Holy Land. When you joined our colleagues, Father Jamal Kader, Leila Asfora, George Sada and Hussam Wahab as part of our Holy Land Committee. We are immensely grateful to you for your involvement and advice in this detailed area of our charitable work. Happily, this has enabled us to get to know you and appreciate the talents that have, enabled, that have been chosen for your next challenges. We pray for you and wish you well in all that you undertake. I ponder how the Apostles felt on their Ascension Day and how they viewed what lay before them. But I do recall that they had available to them the same essential tools as are available to you, your faith and the Holy Spirit. We wish you and your family a fulfilled life in the work you have now undertaken and look forward to many years working with you in the Holy Land. May God bless you both. I'm very happy and very honoured to have this opportunity of sending a personal message on this auspicious occasion. Auspicious but also sad as we say farewell to you, Suhail, after your outstanding ministry as Bishop and Archbishop in the Holy City. You've discharged your duties there with generosity and steadfastness. A resolute ability to hold your vision steady, not to be panicked, not to be sidetracked, not to be intimidated. You set us all a fine example of courageous and faithful ministry as a bishop. And my prayer for you is that in whatever ministry lies ahead for you, there will be not only rest and refreshment, but new challenges and new opportunities for all of us to learn from you. 
I think back with enormous gratitude to the welcome you've given me on so many occasions in the Holy City, where I've had the opportunity of observing how you've related to people from different communities with an equal love, compassion, and passion for justice. So this is an opportunity for me to say a very heartfelt thank you on my own behalf, on behalf of so many of my friends and colleagues, on behalf of the Anglican family at large. It's also an opportunity for me to say to you, Hossam, as you take over this ministry, that our prayers will be with you, that we know we shall receive the same kind of generous hospitality from you, and that we know also that you will discharge your ministry with the same fidelity, the same steadfastness, as has been shown by your predecessor. So please, Hossam, be confident that you will have our support and our love in the challenges that lie ahead. Please pray for all of us as you continue to lead your people in the Holy City, the city of Christ's passion and resurrection and ascension, the city for whose peace we all pray worldwide as a sign of the peace that God designs for his children far and wide. Bless you all and thank you for the opportunity of sending this message. I'm very glad to have this opportunity to send my greetings to Archbishop Suhail Dewani. As you come to the end of your time of office as the Anglican Bishop in Jerusalem, as a great friend of Friends of the Holy Land and as a regular but maybe not frequent visitor there, uh, I appreciate so much the presence that you have given to the Christian community in the Holy Land. They need, you need, all the support that we can give. So I'm glad to have this opportunity of offering my thanks and my greeting. And at the same time, I offer a welcome to Bishop Hossam Naum as your successor. I hope he will continue your work and indeed bring his own strengths and character to it. May God bless you both. Well, at PCDC, we'd like to thank you for your kindness and colleagueship with us over many years. And we especially want to thank you for being our patron for the last 10 years. Thank you for all that you have contributed to the Diocese of Jerusalem, particularly for your work supporting some of the poorest children in your area. I joyfully remember when you and I worked together to support poor children at St George's School some 20 years ago, some of whom are still in contact with us. It's always been a pleasure to meet you and to seek your advice when we've needed it. We would like to wish you and Shafuka every blessing for your retirement with our thanks and love. Meanwhile, we send a very warm welcome to Bishop Hassan and special greeting. We know that the diocese will be in good hands. We're also hoping that Bishop Hassan might be happy to consider being patron to PCDC in the footsteps of Suhail. We would be delighted if in this way he could support PCDC in our Ministry of Love and Miracles with children and young people in schools and universities in the Holy Land. All the trustees of PCDC join me, Malcolm, in sending you good wishes and we pray for God's blessing upon you all at this very special time. This message comes on behalf of your Western neighbour, the Church of England Diocese in Europe. Christians are a small minority within the Arab world Anglicans are an even smaller minority within the Christian Arab world and in this cradle of the faith we're not even 200 years old. We can't call upon our sense of power and might to achieve the things which we may hope for. Archbishop Suhail has shown a remarkable capacity to engage international partners in the search for peace and justice. He's managed to hold in balance the many agencies operating in this ancient and complicated land. With our small scale, we Anglicans are compelled to point not to ourselves, but to Christ as Lord. 
the Archbishop has held out to the world around the hope of the Gospel of Jesus, whom we remember in this season as the risen and ascended King. Through the service institutions of the diocese, in schools and hospitals, as well as the parishes of the province, the Archbishop has shown a commitment to the coming generations and to the need for the future not to repeat the errors of the past. Those generations of young men and women will have the Archbishop to thank for his work in opening their eyes to see how others think and how they see the world. He's demonstrated a dedication to the reconciliation of churches with other churches, of the Church of God with other faiths, and of the world to its Maker and Lord, so that, as St John says, those who believe in me through their word may all be one. Finally, and more personally, I treasure the warmest of memories of the hospitality extended to me and fellow bishops from around the Anglican Communion by the Archbishop during our stay at St George's Jerusalem in 2019. So Archbishop Suhail, please accept my best wishes for a long and happy retirement and my prayers for the flourishing of your successor, Bishop Hosan. From Edinburgh in Scotland, Archbishop Sir Hale. And our thanks to you for your long, faithful and fruitful ministry in the Holy Land during a time of particular unrest and unhappiness. Thank you for living the faith and sharing the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. May your retirement allow you rest and also new opportunities to serve God and God's people. And now, Bishop Hossam, as you take on this great responsibility to feed Christ's sheep in the diocese, may your ministry bring comfort to all who are in such desperate need at the moment, spiritually, emotionally and economically. We pray for you and hope that one day you will visit us here in Scotland. God bless. I am Bishop Declan Lang chair of the Holy Land Coordination Group. The Coordination Group is a group of bishops from Canada, the United States, most of the European countries, who travel to the Holy Land every January to support the Christian communities. We're also very fortunate in having Bishop Christopher Chesham of the Diocese of Southwark in England to accompany us. It was through the auspices of Bishop Christopher that we were able to come to St George's Cathedral in Jerusalem and be welcomed by Archbishop Sir Hale, both to Evensong and to hospitality afterwards. I have many happy memories of that occasion. I wish Archbishop Sir Hale all the best as he approaches his retirement and pray that he will have a very enjoyable and fruitful time. I'd like to say how pleased I am that Bishop Hassan is taking over as the Archbishop of Jerusalem. I wish him well, and he is in my prayers. So to both bishops, thank you. And I look forward to continuing that connection we have with the Anglican Communion in St George's in Jerusalem. Sidna, so Archbishop Sahel, greetings to you from St Peter's Church in Matlusk, in the benefice of Matlusk, where I serve as the rector in North Norfolk in the United Kingdom. Uh, greetings to you, to Shafika, to Sama, to Tala and Ibrahim, to Luban and Mark, to the entire family. Um, uh, I recall this just as you embark, Saigna, on a, a new ministry. Uh, I recall this to thank you uh, on behalf of the Friends of the Holy Land and Pilgrimage People, two trusts um, where I'm a trustee of, to thank you for your incredible ministry, um, which I had that great privilege of witnessing as I served as your chaplain from 2015 to 2018. Uh, I saw through your ministry the love of Christ embodied, your support of the Living Stones, your support of the remarkable institutions, your work in some of the most difficult corners of the world, your care for the people of Gaza, for the people in the refugee camps in Jordan, in Beirut, your care for the Living Stones, the Christians in the Holy Land. Uh, I had the great privilege of enjoying your humour, even when we faced enormous challenges. Um, your grace, your humour kept us going, um, kept us smiling, and uh, made 
being your chaplain such a wonderful experience. And so um, I know now as you hand over the reins to Bishop Hossam, you hand them to good hands. Uh, and so we keep Bishop Hossam, his wife Rafa, and his three children, Wadia, Loris, and Krista, in our prayers here too. This comes with love from Sarah, my wife, and our three children, uh, Zar, Rex, and Artie. Um, we all long to see you soon when times allow. Thank you for your ministry. I will continue to pray for you all and to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It's a great joy to pay tribute to my brother, Bishop, Archbishop, and friend, Sue Hale, and uh, to be sharing in the tributes that are being paid to you, Sue Hale. I was very privileged to come to your enthronement as bishop, and also very privileged to represent the Archbishop of Canterbury when you were made Archbishop, and as you will know, have visited many times between those two events, I think seven times I've been to the land of the Holy One and received your friendship and hospitality on uh, every occasion, not just your personal friendship and hospitality, but um, your hospitality inviting me to so many different places in the land of the Holy One where Christ is honoured and worshipped and where people across the faiths are being served by the institutions of the Anglican Church. It also seems uh, that you have been very close in my own uh, praying and journey because you will remember we went together to Ramallah um, many years ago and uh, this is where my Episcopal ring comes from so very often when I notice it I'm reminded of, of you and your ministry and that of the people of God in Jerusalem and the land of the Holy One and pray for you. Mary and I much enjoyed hosting you too when you stayed with us before the uh, Lambeth Conference and thank you again for hosting the 45 pilgrims that I brought recently uh, on pilgrimage with Lightline. They much valued uh, sitting at your feet, listening to uh, what God is doing in the, in the diocese and, and beyond. So I do pay a huge tribute to you, my friend, and uh, to Shafika too. I know that each of you have been very involved in the ministry that is really at the heart of God's purposes, and not least in your context, the ministry of reconciliation. And I know that Shafika has been doing marvelous work, especially amongst uh, women across the faiths, but beyond that too, in reconciliation. And what an example that is, what an inspiration you have both been. I hope we can keep in touch. I'm sorry I was unable to uh, lead the retreat you invited me to share with you in uh, a year or two ago because uh, I was unable to come then. But I'm hoping to stay in touch with, the, uh, with your successor. And it's wonderful to, to just say to uh, your successor, who has um, also uh, offered me warm and generous, gracious, liturgical, and all sorts of other hospitality on my visits. And I know, um, Bishop Hosam, how, how, uh, how much your appointment has been welcomed across the Anglican communion. So I look forward to um, continuing to be a brother in Christ, but if I can support your ministry in any particular way, please do let me know. And thank you, friends of the Holy Land, such a, uh, such a, such an important um, part of what God is doing uh, and a demonstration of our solidarity in Christ across all, all boundaries. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to say these things and we'll remain with you both uh, in prayer. 
I'm very pleased to bring a message from the Diocese of Sutherland, Nottingham, on the occasion of Archbishop Suheil's retirement. Uh, and as you will see, I'm here um, just uh, very close to the cathedral church of this diocese. Um, and it's the cathedral in particular that have consistently prayed for you in your ministry and have been so grateful for the partnership uh, that we share in the gospel with you. Um, we pray for uh, many more fruitful years of ministry beyond your retirement, but want you to know uh, of our love and uh, of our deep affection for you and uh, for your ministry. But also to say that we're praying for Bishop um, Hossam uh, Naum as he is preparing to be installed in his new ministry as Archbishop uh, uh, in just a, a short time now. And uh, we, we pray that uh, you too will know that uh, we're praying for you here in Sutherland, Nottingham and in the Cathedral Church. And we look forward to deepening our partnership in the weeks and years to come uh, to make a real difference, uh, making the good news of Jesus Christ known and uh, the reality of the gospel uh, being expressed through our commitment to kingdom justice uh, for all those whom we serve. Um, so thank you for uh, uh, giving me the opportunity to, to share this greeting, to pray for God's blessing on you. Dear Archbishop Sahail, it was such a joy and a privilege for me to be able to represent the Archbishop of Canterbury at your enthronement in St George's back in 2007. Uh, since then, it's been a privilege also to continue to follow your ministry and pray for you regularly over this past 14 years. During that time, each of the countries covered by your far-flung diocese has gone through some deeply challenging times and I'm very aware that to them all you've brought your characteristic quiet wisdom and a pastor's heart and so today it's it's a joy to join with so many others in giving thanks for so much for your strong work for peace and reconciliation across the Middle East for your patient commitment to interfaith dialogue and your cooperation and tireless working with the leaders of other churches to ensure that Christianity is a moderate and mediating influence in a region that's sadly torn by so much anxiety and unrest. And how very good it has been to that end that during your tenure of office, the Archbishopric of Jerusalem has been uh, resurrected Please be assured of my continuing prayers for you and for your lovely family as you enter this new post-retirement phase of ministry. And to dear Bishop Hazan, your successor, I pledge my prayers too as you pick up the mantle that Archbishop Sahail is laying down. So for you both, my thanks for your friendship, your fellowship, your hospitality our partnership in the Gospel. Archbishop Suhail Saidna. My name is Philip Mount Stephen. I am the Bishop of Truro in the United Kingdom and I am recording this short message to wish you God's rich blessing in your retirement and to thank you so much for your faithful ministry uh, in Palestine and in the wider Min Middle East as you have led your province uh, over the last uh, few years. Uh, I thank God for you and thank you for our partnership uh, in the gospel. There are ancient, ancient links between this land of Cornwall, where I minister, and the Levant, particularly with the Phoenician traders who traded tin here uh, and, and have done so, did so for, for millennia. So I'm delighted to be in partnership with you in the gospel just as we were in partnership in that ancient trade for so many years. And I long and plan to strengthen our links, particularly with the church in Lebanon in the years to come. So I also want to give my warm greetings to Archbishop Hossam as he takes up his new responsibilities. Uh, the Lord bless you and keep you, my brother, uh, in these new responsibilities. And I look forward very much to our paths crossing again in the future. So may God Bless you both. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for our fellowship together in Christ. 
Amen. Your Grace, Archbishop Sahel, I am very grateful to the Friends of the Holy Land, of which I am a patron, and of which I am very conscious, serves for unity of the Church, and works together and brings together our two churches, Roman Catholic and Anglican. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to wish you well and assure you of my prayers as you conclude your time serving as Anglican Archbishop in Jerusalem. I am very grateful to you for your friendship, for your guidance and for your wisdom. From an early meeting when you gave me this very beautiful olive wood Jerusalem cross. I remember very clearly many of our conversations, your desire to support your peoples in the various nations which you have served as Archbishop, uh, your desire for justice and peace in the Holy Land, your desire for our diocese to work together in friendship and cooperation. It was a wonderful privilege in January with you to sign the covenant which brings our two dioceses together in fellowship and in missional common purpose. I will be coming out to Jerusalem in a few ways, days for the installation of Bishop Hossam as the successor Archbishop in Jerusalem and I will look forward to greeting you personally and to continuing our conversation and our friendship as you begin this new chapter in which I ask God blessing on you. This is a message from me, Tim Lipsy, on behalf of everybody at Embrace the Middle East to you Archbishop Suhail as you retire after 14 memorable years as Archbishop in Jerusalem. And uh, a word of warm welcome to Bishop Hassam as you are installed as the new Archbishop. Archbishop Suhail, I don't know if you remember, but we first met in 2008, I think, when I was working for Rowan Williams at Lambeth Palace. So I've known you for around 13 years, which seems incredible now. But I'm really speaking on behalf of All at Embrace to say how much we're going to miss you and what an enormous privilege it has been to work with you and with all your colleagues at the diocese uh, over many, many years with a number of partners, St Luke's Hospital, the Princess Basma Centre and of course Al Alachi Hospital in, in Gaza. It's a privilege for us to work with the diocese, with those institutions and the wonderful people that work in them. And it has been a great privilege to work with you and to count you as, or to count ourselves as one of your friends. We wish you all the very best in a very well-deserved retirement for you and for your wife. And Bishop Hassan, as you know, we were absolutely thrilled to hear that you had been elected as the new Archbishop and we wish you all the very best. We hope that your installation is a, is a moment of real blessing uh, for you, for your family, for the diocese and Embrace the Middle East looks forward to working with you very closely in the years to come. So our warmest good wishes to you both. <laughs>